Testing, testing. The last test. Hey, what's going on? It is November 11th, which is Remembrance Day up in America's Hat. So that means I have the day off. I have some time to finally wrap up our little conversation on uh, lip sync. And this will be the last video in the tutorial series. Um, I, I gave you guys really a good start on how this is working and sort of set the groundwork for you guys to sort of take this and, and make your own projects. Um, I will continue to answer questions in the comments, um, but this sort of thing could scope creep into a thousand different ways. Um, and it would take a lot of time and effort to go into every single rabbit hole of where you could take your lip sync project. But I do think that um, to this point, you have a really strong base to uh, deliver on your specific project needs. One of the things that I'm gonna do is I'm going to make all of these files available to you guys. That includes the custom real-time uh, plugin uh, that I put together with uh, Ilgur. Uh, so that you can actually generate frame sequences in real time. So really what I'm gonna spend my time on in this video is just sort of bridging the gap between where we left off in the last tutorial, uh, what's available in this project, uh, and I'm going to answer a few questions where people were, were stumbling a little bit, and then uh, I'll make sure that this project is shared on the Google Drive and that you folks have access to it. Like I said, I'm gonna do that through my Patreon account, it's not, um, it's not set up as uh, the same as others. And so really it's pay what you can afford. Um, I've just left it for you to enter in whatever value you think it's worth to access the files. So if that's a couple of bucks, if that's a coffee, that's fine. If it's worth more than that to you, then I would encourage, you know, put in the real value of, you know, getting the frame sequence uh, plugin. I am sort of pretty much making these available for free or, you know, whatever you can afford. So. Thank you. So, um, cool. Why don't I dive into the project? Okay, so uh, the project itself. The first thing is um, one question I had from the channel was, how do I get this working for multiple metahumans? So I've set up the project to do that. I'll just show you that it works. If I just press three here, or sorry, if I press one, A, A. Ah, uh, D, and uh, two, d d car, tip, apple, doll, banana. Tall. So really I just have it set up in the level blueprint of this specific map. Um, this map is called new map in the project. And essentially um, if I open the level blueprint, you can just see that pressing one or two will grab the individual actors and then it'll um, call a function within the actors blueprint to execute um, the OVR lip sync code. So that's how I've set that up. Uh, I had a question on that. So anyways, that's been set up. Uh, so you have access to that. I'm actually going to rename the map because new map is not a good name. Uh, and we'll just call this uh, two meta humans. Okay. So that map is in there. You'll have access to, I did share this in a separate video uh, and you can, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below if you're looking for this tutorial. Um, but I also uh, put together a fun little 2D uh, project. You will respect my authority. So access to those files and all of the, the visims that go along with that and the project code um, is available. Uh, here within the project as well, if you're looking for that. Um, what else, what else? Um, if I go back to two metahumans here, I'll show you a couple of things. 
um, in the project here. I did do a little bit of cleanup um, on the, whoops, I'm clicking around here. Um, I did do a little bit of cleanup on the uh, animation blueprint that's in here. So there's a couple of things that are happening now that weren't happening in the tutorial. I basically put some logic into um, one, differentiate between the different um, actors. So in the case of these metahumans, they each have their own, I'll just hit the magnifying glass. They each have their own animation blueprint. There's, there's ways to centralize the logic and keep one animation blueprint, um, but uh, I wasn't there yet with this project. So um, the easiest way in its current state is just to create a separate animation blueprint. And then within that blueprint, target the actor you're looking for. Um, and so that's essentially all that I've done is created a separate animation blueprint. And then at this place here, I've just targeted the different uh, metahuman blueprint. Um, and then based on that blueprint, it'll pull in the OVR um, functionality. Okay, so that's uh, that's that. The other, I'll just close this one out so it's not uh, super confusing. Um, the other stuff I've added here is there's a uh, there's some randomization functions going on in, in, to make the character blink, um, and I've included the code there. This is actually abandoned code, so I can get rid of it. Um, and we could rename this portion to the blinking. Sorry, my computer's lagging a little bit. Uh, I got a few things going on here. Um, so yeah, we could include all of this here, comment that out as blinking logic. And so that's in there. I'm just gonna color that blue again, or purple, I guess. Okay, so there's blinking logic. Um, there is, you know, logic to determine whether the character is flinching. I'll explain that in a second. And just getting them to look around in different directions. Um, the other thing that's really important in here, and, you know, if you were following along in my previous tutorials, you will need to make this come out. So what you want to do is you want to check the length of your array and make sure that it's greater than zero before you execute on any code. So you can see that our code is executing from the beginning and it's running through. Um, and then when we pull the array out of the Vizims, actually get rid of this one. Uh, when we pull that out, we're checking for the length before we execute any of the following code. Um, and so you wanna make sure you do that. Otherwise you're going to fill your logs up um, and, and actually uh, create a memory leak uh, within your project. So make sure that if you, at the very least, if you don't download these files that you do put in this logic check to make sure that um, you're not executing all this real-time functionality on an array that's empty. Um, what else? Uh, I put in a silence array actions. So this is related to the flinching that's going on here. Basically, I created an array um, just with five values, and this was just random just for me to do a proof of concept. But essentially, on the silence array action, I have five actions that I created, smile left, nose wrinkle left, brow down, mouth frown, smile right, and nothing. And then based on um, those, uh, those values, um, you can see I've constructed in the animation graph a, graph, a silence array action uh, that drives uh, animation to the character. And so the way that, that that all plays out is if I hit play here, oh. and again, you know, Tall. Um, try to mine the, or ignore the, um, D. Uh, D. the frame rate. D D but if D I uh, run this, Tall. Tall. Uh, you can see that she's blinking, she's looking around while the, D. Um, D. D D while the uh, lip sync animation is, is playing out. Tall. And that's all being driven from the silence or reactions. And in the example that we just ran, it must have chosen D, uh, nose wrinkle D, left, D, yeah, D, it did. Um, and she was wrinkling her D, nose as um, we played that out. But essentially it's gonna randomly select one of these values and then it's going to drive the animation based on that. And so that's what all this is flinching logic. I just said, you know, if she's smiling, if she's half smiling, if she's sneering or those type of things, those I'm calling a flinch. And then the looking around in different directions and the blinking is uh, done separately in these boxes.
so that's the difference. You, you can take apart that code and reverse engineer it and have a look at that, but that's how that works. And uh, just thinking what else. So we covered off the two humans. We covered off the additional sort of looking around features in there. Um, yeah, I guess that's primarily it. Um, we talked about the 2D stuff that's in here. And uh, again, I'll link the video down below if you want access to that. The last thing really then is, um, actually there's two things. There's the real time frame sequences that everybody's asking about, and I'll walk you through that in a sec. Um, the other thing that I had questions on was how do I leverage this uh, with a uh, sequencer? And so the short answer is what I would do is I would use Take Recorder. And you can see I have Take Recorder up here, just Windows uh, Cinematics, Take Recorder. And what I would do is I would capture the animations um, and then I would bring those animations into my cinematic recording. So in this case, um, what we need to do is we need to target uh, an actor for the Take Recorder. So let me just throw Linz in there. And um, if I then pressed play, and let me just focus on her. And I hit two to run her animation. D, 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 hit. Sorry, I did that in the reverse order. If I hit record, so if I hit play, then record, my bad. And then once it's counted down here, if I hit two, D, 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 D tip, doll, tall. And then I hit escape. Um, I'm just going to hit yes here. Um, and then I hit escape. And essentially what it's done is it's recorded all of that animation for us. So if we went into the content browser and we went to, there should be uh, cinematics. And we went into takes. Um, and this, uh, I've recorded a bunch. So the next, they just run in sequence. So if we did that again, it would show up in 109. It stores all of that information here for us, right? So if I now scrub through, um, I have to move what happens is sequencer creates another model. Um, so this is our original model, but this um, this one that sequencer created, you can now see it's got all the animations. So we could actually take our audio clip and drop it into sequencer here um, and we could play the whole thing out. So let me just find our audio clip. I think it was D, 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 D right? Uh, yeah, this one. So if we actually drag this into Sequencer and dropped it in there, did it work? Try that again. Sequencer. Oh, it's not letting us. Why is that? It'll let us do on a brand new sequence. <clears throat> uh, new animation level sequence. Uh, meta human test. Oops. Let's just do that. DD, where are you? There. Okay. That worked. Um, yeah. And if we uh, then took our animations here, so in cinematics, we had this, uh, sorry, we had this take, um, this scene. And we could probably bring this scene into our sequencer there. That's how we can link these up. So now if I actually played this back, D, 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 D. Oh, why is it not doing the animation now? Oh, I don't have it lined up. That's why. <laughs> D. So where does she actually start talking? D. D. There. Right about there. So if we lined this up, D, 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 D. D, 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 D. Okay, there we go. Um, so anyways, you, you kind of get the idea here. This isn't a, a, a sequencer exercise, but what you could do is you could then, you know, line up your cinematic with your audio. D, 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 tip, doll, tall. And now you could um, run the sequence. 
The other thing that you could do is that if we deleted this uh, sub scene and we left the audio in, if we actually went into the animation, it's actually recorded all of the different animation that took place in that scene. So now we have this animation object, right? Um, so if you wanted, um, what you could then do is you could in your sequencer, drag in your character, um, and then you could um, have them animate, right? So we could put a, where's animation? Uh, oh, we need on the face uh, track animation, and then we could pick the one um, that we just made there. So this scene 108, and then um, if we got rid of, I believe if we get rid of the control rig, so it's not overriding, there you go. D, 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 D. So same thing, we're gonna have to line it up with the audio, so right there. Somewhere around there. D, 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 tip, doll. And then you could render out um, the sequence. So that gives you a couple of different ways to use the cinematic uh, and the sequencer function with the lip sync. People are asking about that. Um, yeah, and I think that brings us to the final element, which um, really this is, if you plan to use an API service, you're going to need to render out the frame sequences in real time. So the way that the OVR lip sync tool is set up is if we wanted to have the frame sequences, I'll just go to this as a reminder. Um, oh, and here's the benefit that you'll have of also getting uh, this project is all of these audio files that I was using in the demo, um, you can get them because they'll be in this project. So you'll have my uh, Visiums that I created instead of having to create your own. Um, anyways, okay, so in order to uh, generate the lip sync uh, frame sequences, uh, we actually have to do that manually, right? So if I deleted this, uh, actually, I'm not going to do that because it's being used. But if I deleted this, then you wouldn't get the animation that goes with this. So in order to create a frame sequence, you have to go up to uh, here, generate, generate, <laughs> generate lip sync sequence, and then it creates the paired uh, frame sequence file. So how can you do that in real time? There's no functionality to do that. So uh, like I was saying before, uh, I commissioned Ilgar and we worked together to uh, create um, a real time blueprint node that will generate these uh, frame sequences off of any audio file. So you won't have to import the audio file into Unreal. You don't have to generate the frame sequence ahead of time. It'll do that in real time. Uh, so let me show you how that works. Um, what are we going to do? Uh, the first thing that you'll need actually is in your plugins, you'll need audio analysis, analysis tools enabled for the run time audio importer plugin. Um, you can get that from uh, the marketplace. Just literally just search for the tool. We'll show you that it's available. Uh, audio analysis tool. Boom. Get that plugin and uh, I'm going to use it to, I mean, you don't have to have this, but I'm going to use it to demonstrate um, how this real time sequence generator works. Okay, with that installed, you got to restart. Sure. So just a little bit on Ilgur before I um, move on to showing you the plugin and making that available. Ilgur does have uh, some products available on the marketplace. So if you're interested in some of these other um, uh, speech integrations and whatnot, then look up Ilger Lunin on the marketplace and um, he's fantastic. So uh, he's got a discord and he's super uh, helpful and super responsive. Um, so you can grab any of his products uh, that might suit your needs. And additionally, he's got uh, a bunch of work on GitHub uh, that he shares. Uh, the particular uh, item that we're looking at is this uh, OVR lip sync cook frame sequence. The original version that he made uh, makes use of raw samples. So if you want to leverage that, great. 
If not, this is uh, basically the um, the plugin that our additional code here uses. Instead of uh, making it available in the raw samples form, we actually uh, made it so that you can extract it and use it um, from a uh, flat file or a file on your desktop. So that's a little bit about Ilger. Um, show him some love, awesome guy. And if you're interested in that stuff, join his Discord and support him on the marketplace. Uh, cool beans. Okay. Um, so what are we gonna do? Let's generate a new level. Uh, we'll just do a default one. And then let's pull in one of our metahumans. Let's, uh, let's pick Coda because we used, um, uh, we used Lens a lot. So we'll just do this for the sake of variety. Okay. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into the blueprint. And in here, this is essentially the section that is uh, running his code. What we want to do is, you know what, I'm going to create a custom event for now and we'll rename this later once I figure out what to do with it. Actually, you know what, I'll do coda real time, we'll call it, okay? Um, and then what we want to do is we want to do create runtime audio importer. So that's the plugin that we just set up and I showed you um, where to download that. Bind event to on result. There, that's why this all didn't work. Cool. Now with those tied together, it should be able to uh, custom add custom event. Boom. Okay, there, that's better. Then on result event. Awesome. Uh, and then this guy, what we want to do is we want to promote this to a variable, which we're going to set, right? And then um, what we want to do with this is we want to get the duration of this. And the reason being is if we don't have the length of the audio file that's returned, then we won't know when to sort of um, start and stop, more so stop the lip sync frame sequence. We need to know the length of the audio because the frame, frame sequence will match that. And then also it'll allow us to know when we move on to the next portion of code because we're going to kind of stick a delay in there um, to help us manage uh, how this all works. Okay, um, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say import audio from file. Boom. And we're going to want to create a file path. So whoops, this is we're just going to promote to variable again. And sure, we'll leave it as file path. Let's compile and save that we can rename this and then you can just make this whatever file path you want. So we'll just put C colon um, for now. And actually, we'll make it better than that. We'll say C colon and we'll say backslash um, frame sequence audio. It's too long. Frame sequence audio like that. Okay, cool. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Form determined format automatically. Okay, so this is the part where this is the custom asset. So you're only going to be able to access this from this project. And specifically, if you go to the project, in my case, where do I have this thing stored? I have it in. No. I have this in here, OVR, lip sync demo 427. Yeah, this is the one. Okay, so in here, these, this plugin project file, or this plugin folder is the one that has the custom frame sequence asset in here. Um, if you actually went to, is it the source? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, you can actually see the, custom C++ assets. So if you actually want to go and check out the C++, you can actually go into the plugin and do that. Just remember this is compiled for 427. So if you want to use it for another version, you'll have to recompile it for that version. But you could take this plugin and you could move it to different projects. So if you just want the plugin um, and you want to expose the other projects, that's how you would do that. Otherwise, 
Um, I'll show you. So with that set up and compiled, um, you can now run cook frame sequence, or you could run uh, cook frame sequence asset. And this is the custom one. So you won't be able to get this anywhere else. This is the one that um, Ilger and I uh, combined on to get working. Um, and this is his original, um, this is his original uh, custom C++ node. So this one, if you wanted to use with the raw samples, you could, um, but in our case, we don't have raw samples. We actually have a uh, wave file path. And guess what? We're gonna use the same one here. Uh, we'll pretty that up in a second here. Boom. Okay. Okay, so let's just keep humming along here. Um, oh, you do need to drag in, I'll just show you. You drag in uh, this to complete the target. So you remove that error. Um, this should all match. I don't think uh, anything's different there. Um, and then we want to build out the next portion <clears throat> of the logic here. Just give me one sec. <laughs> ah, here we go. Uh, okay, yeah, we want to build out the next portion of the logic. So uh, basically, when the frame sequence is cooked, uh, we want to drop in a branch. And this is going to be successful. Um, you could, um, you know, you could put in some print strings here. You know, maybe just on the false side, uh, print string, just so an error message comes up. Uh, cook sequence failed. Uh, we'll turn that into red so we know there's a problem. Cool. And then on the true path, we'll throw in a little delay. Uh, point, whoops, point three. And um, out this side, we are going to uh, promote to variable actually. This we're going to have slide that down here. This all connected here. There we go. Um, yeah, we'll set those frame sequences, and then this is where we're actually going to start the um, uh, OVR lip sync playback actor, right? So this guy. And, you know, this is the same functionality that's happening here. So rather than it all being assigned, right, this one, it's manually assigned. Uh, this one, the sequence is going to be this guy, which is auto generated. Okay. Um, that's the big difference. Uh, that is right. That all looks good. We need an audio uh, component here. So. Where do we do? We, I thought we, oh, I never completed um, this portion. So we've got the uh, duration, but then uh, I didn't do anything else with it here. So this return value, we also need to report, uh, promote to a variable. Just gonna slide this all down a little. Give us some room. Okay, this variable, uh, this guy is going to be called length. A wave file, so that's the uh, length of our wave file that we're going to have on our uh, in our C drive. There, we'll set the sound. Uh, audio, and then this guy needs to come in here. There we go. Cool. Uh, now we can bring in um, this audio as well. That's fine. Uh, and then what we want to do here is we want to stop delayed. So this is where we want to stop that audio. It's going to be the same audio file. And then the delay time is that length of wave file that we just made. Cool, and now this should all work in real time. So 
what we'll need to do is we'll need to get a uh, sound file. Um, I have a bunch on my L drive here. So uh, music library, uh, we don't want one that's particularly long. I'm just looking. Oh, that's music. Um, but there's some here. I think that I just made. Oh yeah, here's all these silly ones. Um, okay, so I'll just grab one of the. Yeah, 390k. That's really small. Is that your greatest attempt? Right. So if I go and I put this now on my C drive in the path uh, that we created. So let's just make sure that we have our file path correctly. If I put this in C frame seek audio. So frame seek audio, right? <clears throat> uh, sorry, got a couple of projects open here. But oh yeah, that was the right one. Um, frame seek audio. Yeah, that matches. Okay. So if we put this file in here, cool, your greatest attempt. Um, and we probably have to make sure that it has the name there. So let's just get the exact same name. Uh, and it's a dot wave file, right? Yeah, dot wave. Okay. So let's go back to our project this in there properly your greatest attempt dot wave uh, compile and save now it should actually uh, pull in that sound and play it on our actor okay so <clears throat> I did uh, because we created a new level I did have to go up here and um, uh, execute the code a real-time code that we made uh, based on a button press so press one get actors of class and then run code a real time, which is um, the function that we've been working on here. Okay, uh, so when we run this, and now when I hit one, I'm just gotta wait a sec here. Is that your greatest attempt? <laughs> so that's it, uh, covered off a lot. Um, that'll close off this series, I'll move on to <laughs> I'll move on to whatever interests me next. Um, and I'll bring that to you guys. You can see that there's a whole bunch of different stuff that I'm into and I'm bringing back into the channel to sort of help the next person along. Um, if you do want uh, the real-time frame sequence generator that I just created, um, the only place to get it is on Patreon. Um, so uh, check that out. Uh, and like I said, you can donate as little or as much as you feel um, is worth uh, uh, your while and what you can afford. Um, yeah, that's it. So, um, other than that, uh, you know, like, and subscribe if, uh, you continue to like the content and, uh, stick around and I'll, uh, generate some more stuff. Thank you.